Hello, this is your Mr. Security 702, and today I am continuing on the topic of the basics of chemistry. Last time I discussed the definition of some of the basic terminology of the field of chemistry. Today I will discuss some of the quantitative aspects of chemistry. And as always, references in the dealing with Bob. First, let's recap my last video. Chemistry is the study of the atoms and molecules that make up matter and how those atoms and molecules interact with one another. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Atoms are the base unit of an element. <coughs> molecules are the substances that are made up of two or more atoms. Organic chemistry is the study of molecules which contain at least one carbon atom, possibly with each carbon atom attached to at least one hydrogen atom. Biochemistry is organic chemistry which happens to be alive. Chemistry deals a lot with numbers. These properties of chemistry that deal with numbers are referred to as quantitative properties properties that are associated with numbers. Examples of quantitative properties are temperature, mass, density, pH, activation energy, and half-life. And no, not the MMO. There are units associated with the metric system as with the English system. These units are referred to as SI units. For length, we have the meter. For mass, we have the kilogram. Time, as with the English system, is the second. Temperature is Kelvin. For the quantity of a substance, we use the mole, which in this instance is not the animal. For electrical current, we have the ampere. For luminosity of a substance, we use the candela. As far as the names of greater and lower quantities of the SI units, there is a great utilization of prefixes. Th for those of you acquainted with the units for storage capacity of computers, you know a few of these prefixes already. Byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte are those that most people are familiar with. There are more prefixes as well. I will put a reference or two in the dealie, McBob. Now let us finally start with the quantitative measurements. First let us begin with mass. There are two types of measure of mass used in chemistry. The first is the kilogram, used in the macro world. There are approximately 1.61 pounds in a kilogram. The second type of mass used is of the uh, microscopic world which is the atomic mass unit, or AMU for short. <laughs> One AMU is equivalent in mass to a single common hydrogen atom. This is used to measure very small quantities of samples. Length does not have a separate micro-world equivalent. The length of an atom is on the scale of a very small prefix for the macro scale length unit of meter. One meter is a couple inches greater than a yard, about 38 inches. Though this is not an exact conversion, I'll probably look that up later. Note that the term length is used interchangeably with the terms width and depth you've learned in geometry class. The standard unit for temperature is the Kelvin scale, which is so, uh, similar to the Celsius scale, with one notable exception. The Kelvin scale does not have any negative values, where the Celsius scale does. Zero degrees Kelvin is equivalent to negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, or the coldest any substance can be.
feasibly get where the freezing and the freezing point of water is plus 273.15 degrees Kelvin. The conversion factor between the Celsius scale to the Kelvin scale is merely adding 273.15 to the Celsius unit, while the conversion factor from Fahrenheit to Celsius is uh, the temperature in Celsius is equal to the quantity of the Fahrenheit temperature minus 32 multiply that answer by 5 divide that answer by 9 these are the three bigs the three standards of measurements from which all other units are derived a derived unit is one that is not solely a single unit alone. For example, volume is a measure of the cube of length and is expressed as meters cubed or meter times meter times meter. Notice that there is an exponent in the unit. That is a sign of the unit being a derived unit. Other signs are whether there are two or more units placed together, as the case with density, which is mass per given unit of area, or kilograms per meter cubed. In science, we differentiate between exact numbers and inexact numbers. An exact number is, as implied, one that is known precisely to the last digit. 12 units in a dozen. The 12 units is known exactly. An inexact number is one that has some measure of error in it. We don't know it precisely, but we know it close enough for measurement. For example, the number pi is inexact. It will always be an exact. If I were a betting man, and incidentally I am, I would bet that you do not know pi exactly. There is not a single human being on the planet that knows pi exactly. In science, we also use significant figures, which is how many measured digits there are. For instance, we have a scale in the chemistry lab that is accurate to four digits to the right of the decimal point. So it has five or possibly six significant figures at a time. Uh, the five if it's less than 10 grams, the six if it's more than 10 grams. The measure of mass of an object on the scale, therefore, is accurate to within plus or minus 0 0.0001 grams. And this uh, accurate within a range is how you can determine whether an, a number being told to you is exact or inexact because an exact number would not have a plus or minus attached to it but an inexact number has to have that plus or minus uh, figure to be accurate and honest I hope you have learned a little more about how the world of chemistry works. Take that as you will. This is your Mr. Security 702, signing out.